Hey guys, how's it going? This is going to be, I think, part five on this uh, Barn Find Honda Trail 70 that I got from a friend of mine. And he bought it 20-something years ago with unknown condition. I think he said possibly at a flea market, and he, even he doesn't quite remember. So the first bunch of videos, we're just trying to get it running, get the engine squared away, and that is pretty much done. Fuel system's done, that kind of thing. The problem with it is it does smoke when it's cold. When it warms up, kind of goes away. I have a feeling we are at a later date, probably going to take that engine, maybe even tear it down and make two good ones out of the parts bike that is behind me. But for now, we're going to continue moving forward. It does run, ride, shift. Uh, fairly well so i want to get it so we can at least yard drive it and then you know make an assessment from there right now the old thing in the bars are hanging off the front end you can see them hanging here bent up some new ones or unbent some new ones that can work and function correctly throttle works we need to transfer that stuff over and uh the wheels need to be addressed wheels fenders that kind of thing at first i bought two new tires for it i decided that i'm probably not going to put them on and Instead, what I'm going to do is probably use the two original tires. We have a good one here that's probably going to go on the back. And we are going to steal the front wheel assembly off of this one and put it on the front. And we'll make the best of what we can out of the back one. So let me get my uh, self gathered together, get the bike flipped around on the lift, and we'll get into it. Just popped off those two cables, front brake cable and the uh, speedometer cable. Got those out of the way. Does that even have an end in it? Yeah, it does. Good. I do have new cables for it. Might be a little suspect. We'll check it out. Pull the cotter key, pull the nut off, pull the axle out, and get that front wheel out of there. Where's my helper? Need a 17 millimeter. Go get it. Are you going to get it for me? I guess I gotta trade pets for uh, manual labor. It's almost out, but usually what I do is I just cut the bottom of the cotter key right off, especially if it's really bad. And you get a set of wire cutters. You can grab it with the cutters and use it as a fulcrum to pull them out. From past comments, I guess in other countries, uh, they call Cotter Keys, it's a different name, Split Pin, I think it was. In the USA, we call, that's what they, we call them, Cotter, Cotter Pins, Cotter, Cotter Keys, Cotter Pins. And then I guess on their bicycles, they use them for uh, the, the, the crank pins. I don't know what we would call those here. Let's get that out of our way. We need a screwdriver to... We use the best brake shoes out of the two front wheels too that we can find. Let's see what we get. Drop that on the ground. And go pop it up and see what we got. Don't look too bad. The grease for the speedo looks decent. Shoes look decent. The gear looks okay. Put that down in a friendly, clean place. But we are not going to use again this front wheel. We're going to use it on the back. When we get the one off the other bike, we'll take a peek and see what we got on that one. So we look at the other bike. We got a helper. I'm not down here to pet you. Yes, you are. <laughs> And I'm looking at the tire. And in the tire. Back up, buddy. This eyewall's cracked, so we're gonna go back to plan A again and just put the new tires on it. I thought I had two good ones and I wanted to kind of keep it the factory style, but uh, not gonna happen. So you think it'd be better to knock the dents out while the tire's still on? I see one there. Probably a light one there. I would figure the other side. Actually, this side looks pretty good. Let's try tapping it while it's on the rim. That way we can kind of use the tire as a judge for how far to go. I don't think we need that much. 
Let's just see if we go with a, with a nylon hammer. Yeah, move that finger out of the way. <laughs> that's pretty good. We had a. Uh, that's a little square. What I like about these rims is you know, the smaller the tires get, the harder they are to get the tire on and off. You know, when you're going up over the bead, but this one splits in half, so you don't have to do that. See any more? Right there. Must have been all those sweet jumps, right? All right, let's get the bolts out of it. See if we can just split it apart. Nope. Don't want to play. Got to give them a little. them out of there I want to take and clean these up I got some silver paint let me go cuff these up here is some of that rust and give them a shot and maybe we'll jump onto the rear while these are curing I took the heavy stuff off the wire wheel and then I threw them in a sandblasting cabinet, which works kinda. I mean, it's, they're better than what they were. Wouldn't exactly say perfect, but <laughs> my sandblasting cabinet does put up a fight. I think we're gonna go try going with that. Just some high temp wheel paint and see how it does. I, I'm hoping that silver kind of goes fairly well with that and it doesn't look like that fake chrome, but we're gonna go find out right now. And coat number two. Breathe them up a bit. Make sure you keep it moving. And it's because my heat gun broke. We'll let those rims dry up. I figured then it can go start moving forward on some other pieces. And that front fender is just hammered to death. And it has gotten folded back a few times and unfolded back a few times, I'd say, in its lifetime. Let's see if we can get those two 10 millimeters 
out of there and get the fender off of it. And we're probably going to end up stealing that one because it looks fairly decent. What do you think our chances are those two are going to come out? Pretty rusty underneath. Let's see if our impact will be the... Yeah, good. Not quite as much as I thought it would. I got the cables to deal with. Yeah, we can clean up these forks and stuff too while it's apart. As far as the changing the oil in them, the dampening feels pretty good. I think maybe we'll wait till it's all together. I gotta look up what oil goes inside the forks too. I'm not sure what it would be. Let's spray the front end down with WD so we can go clean that up while we're waiting too. This one's got a little blurp in the front. I think we can bend that back in the submission. Terrible though. Bottom side's kind of crusty. I figure if you want, when we throw that in the sandblaster too, try to clean that up. And maybe we could probably use that same paint, just kind of blow some in there to you know, hide some of that. Wanna? Yeah, why not? See how blasted the bottom. Good enough. But we need to get rid of. Let's just give her a little manipulation. Get that lip face in the way. Hmm. Part of me wants to grab it in a vise with a rag wrapped around it on this side and, and pull here. He's hanging off the cliff there a little. That's much better. We might be on the right track there. The rule for dent repair, last in, first out. Well, I'm gonna work on that a little bit more. Actually, it went. Oops. There you go. I might uh, work that lift just to get a nice curve to it. Yes, yeah, the tad raised right there still. Anything a little right here? Let's grind the grind the chrome into the crud when we're doing it. That's pretty good, don't it? Yeah, we'll leave it alone. If worst case we put it on the bike, we can tweak it a little bit yet still. Let's go throw some paint in the middle. Dust that off. Not sure which one I do first. I'll go clean that chrome up. Sprayed it down a little bit of WD, and this is steel wool, but it's zero, 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 zero. For those that don't know, steel wool comes in different different weights like sandpaper or different grits like sandpaper, so you can see the numbers on it. So this is about the finest you can get. Pull that up too. Okay. Trying to avoid getting it on the other side where the paint's going to be. Trying to keep it going one direction too so that if it does have scratches in it, at least it's kind of uniform. Go grab a plea rag and wipe that off. Uh, dead for us. Good enough. The pits are going to be where the pits are, you know. They're not going to go away, but if you can make the size of the rust that they have. Yeah, the bike 
we could polish the bike after the bike's all together. I'm just trying to, while I have stuff apart, it's nice to get into the, you know, if the fender was on there, it'd be hard to get around these little nooks and crannies. Paint the bottom. Should have missed it a finer coat on. You can see where it's kind of running away. That's just the thinner burning off, and that's what you're trying to do. My garage is cold, so it's about 45 degrees in here. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Let's give it another shot. Sometimes with paint, if, it's, if it starts fish eyeing like that, you miss the coat on and cure it and then come back. I'm gonna try going over it heavier and heavier. Let's see if it'll take. I think it'll be fine. And I'm gonna do the same for the forks while that stuff's drying. It's gonna kind of give them a what for with a four row steel wool. Just go over everything. Just kind of helps. It, it, it gives it a little bit of tooth because when this stuff's this old, it just has a layer of grime on it. So if you just try polishing it, sometimes you just polish the, the crap in with this. It'll give you a second to break all the heavy stuff loose and then you're you know what that what you have, you know, what's actually dirt and what's actually damaged to whatever the part is. Sometimes they'll look like hell. And you clean them up, and they're like, "Hey, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is clean them." So, all right, you get that idea. Let's clean up the outside face of the brake drum, and I want to probably clean up that pivot. Clean the brake shoes too, but let's see if we can get them off. Generally, I believe they have an O-ring in there. I might just try putting a little bit of light oil down and around it. Just for the sake. Might not be able to. You pop the lever off and you, and you just drive it out. Let's see if I can... There it goes. So, get a little on the other side too. Butter now. Good. Here's your problem. I'm gonna clean those back up. We'll put the shoes on. I'm just gonna cuff up the shoes lightly. They look pretty decent though. I looked into the grease that's in there. That looks really nice. I'm gonna leave that alone. Gonna work a little bit more up on the on the gear for the trying to get everything in the shot. Normally we're not sand over the top or something that uh, <laughs> I'm trying to put lube on, but yeah, the the gear for the speedo down in there seems fine, and this grease seems really good too. So I'm just gonna kind of mold it around a little bit, get everything wet again. I'm not gonna wash it all out of there. I think I'm just gonna leave it be. The chances are getting this back on there without smacking myself. That's better. I even doubted myself. All right, time to get that tube in that tire. I'll put this over by the heater and let it stretch out. We'll throw some air in the tube to give it some form. Should be able to get it with an air gun. And say, well. Let's see if we can 
Chuck, that's going to be too much. Do you hate when you cut your nails? <laughs> I'll bring you back. <laughs> Let the thing begin. I was looking to see if the tire had a, a direction on it. Travel didn't. These are cheapos. It was like a hundred bucks, 99 bucks delivered with new tubes. Some baby powder probably wouldn't have hurt. You wanna throw a little bit more air in there maybe? Kind of give it a little fluff out? I just don't want to pinch it when we put the two halves of the rim together, you know? That's better. That's what I was hoping for. Where's the valve stem? Fine line. struggles earlier so I started two of the larger balls because I couldn't catch it you know the little ones I just couldn't grab so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the two larger ones to put it back together I want to put a little bit more air in there just so I don't pinch that tube be good. now I'll run those in you still have to take those back out but good. Well, at least I do. Right, now I can come back and bolt my little ones in. That's far tight. Now we can drop the hub back in. Maybe. <laughs> and the uh, nuts just kind of get held in on one side by the hub. Start, I say. Start, I say. I'll make you start. There you go. Threaten it once in a while, that's all. Wrong way. I'm going to go do that for the other four. Oh, that looks so much better. It doesn't look like I got a ton of fingerprints on it either. gear. I don't know if it's better to try to pop it up inside there or I think this would be the best to get those two tabs locked in you know. Yeah. I see that's a tad more attractive. You can get it back on the bike. And have it a little before or after shot. See, it's a tad bit of an improvement, huh? Call that the thumbnail too, right about there. Just 
throw some air in there. Anyway, probably about 20 psi. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Sounds like a safe number though. What do you think we got? I'm gonna guess that we're at 15. Nope. <laughs> How about 40? It's a little check valve on here. You can, you can bleed it down, or slip it on, slip it at the valve stem side. Twenty-four. That sounds a good number to me. I should see how it spins, huh? A little, a little lumpy. I think running it around, let the air out of the tire, and give it air again might help it. Let's see how that spins. Eh. Run it a bit and reset it later. Let the air out, fill it back up again. So this is the front brake. I'm still on the old handlebar lever. And they seem like they move just fine. I'm probably gonna go shoot some fluid down inside them and maybe use them over. It seems like the jacket is bent a tad right here. I might take some shrink tubing on it and I'll clean out the threads too. So I took the other part of the cable off this for the handle was connected to. We're going to do our best to get a cable oiler on there. Cable oiler. I know I've shown it before. I haven't seen it. What cable oil can do is it can clamp down on the end of the cable inside here is like a funnel. It's stepped like that so on, on this end very fine it wants to lock down around just what's left of the cable and on the top side it's fat it can wrap around the outside of the jacket and what that allows you to do is it's got a little port on it this will be the funnest part right here I'm trying to start this without dropping the can and staying in film and all that deal all right it allows you to put any kind of one of those little straws on there and it'll shoot fluid anyway you get the idea. Something's leaking out here, but it's also trying to force it all the way down the cable. You can get it where it kind of comes out the other side of it, and you work it back and forth, and it lubes the cable. I'm going to try some uh, penetrating lithium grease on this one. It may work, it may not. I'm going to see how it does over time. If I find it starts to gum up, then I'll know not to use it. And if it doesn't, I may stick with it. So, I'll take that off. And you could, if you have the ends of the cable that are accessible too, you can. I should probably went the other way. Yeah. Not much room in this one. But you can you know, throw that on the other end of the cable. Do the same from that side too. And we work it back and forth. The, you actually see it. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a wear spot in the jacket. Right there. You can see where it's shooting out of right there. Alright, we've got a choice to make. Do you want to put new levers on? Or do you want to... I could take one off the other bike and we could have two used ones. He seems like I have a bit of a kick to him. He's a straight. What do you think? He's actually a little... No, same length. So wait a minute, that's got a... And your cam on the end of it. And that one does not. What would that cam do for us? Anyway. This makes more of a stop. And I'm not sure what the idea is behind that. Alright, we'll go try putting the new ones on. If you don't like it, go swap them over. There is all hooked up. I even think. See if I can do that. I believe the speedometer works. 
So whatever the miles they're on that probably are. It's all the original cable and hub and speedo. And I think that little clip on the brake lever. Get there. That thing right there. Probably on some later bikes there's maybe an external switch and for the rear brake light, and that might be a tab for it. That's a guess on my part though. I don't have uh, what I thought was a kill switch is not. I guess it's apparently for the horn. I'm surprised. I'm surprised it doesn't have a kill switch on the handlebars. But the one that I took out of the other handlebars, the button is broken on it. It's busted on the back side. And how these go on are through the the center of the grip. So the center of that grip is a screw hole back there and that's what focus that's what that screw is right there but i don't have one but it's no big deal i think to pop that lever off you such you just take the screw out you could just pull the lever out of the way and reattach i'm going to leave the grips off for now in case we need to take it apart you need to take the grip off to get to the screw to take all this assembly away hope i show you all this assembly away but we're going to leave that with the grip off for now just in case i want to jump onto the back tire i really don't want to get tied up my battery's flashing i don't want to get tied up in restoring the rest of the front end my goal was to get the lights done but i want to get this other handlebar off of here and to do that it's the same deal the switch goes through the grip you have to pull the wires through so the wires have to come out of the headlights so i'm going to pop the headlight open get those wires out of there and then we'll deal with that later when we're uh, finished restoring the front end made it yeah, so let's see what surprises we get when we take the headlight off that is the adjuster all right you tell me that's the adjuster How do you get in? Copy a yell. They're yelling at me right now. Oh, I see a screw. There it is. I heard you. I heard you. Calm down. Doesn't it hurt to poke things with a screwdriver once in a while? I knew better too. Yeah, sure he did. <laughs> Some of you are saying. Yeah, now you come up. She's like a fork right here. There we go. Now we're in, and now we can go find where those wires go. And this all has to come apart anyway. Should I have the balls just to unplug everything? All the greens were going together. There's two blues and white went to white. I think white broke though. Yes, white broke. And most of those probably go to the switch anyway. This was just high beam, low beam. Two of them did. Red is going to hopefully another red. I call that red. Guess what I'm over there for? What's up? Yeah. Okay. And then what we have left is a brake cable. Let's go get that off now. Yay, it's free! I'm gonna go shove that stuff in a box, not be that concerned about it. I wanna flip the bike around and get the rear wheel done. Did that bother a few people? <laughs> 
Yeah, I have a new chain and sprockets, so that's why I was not that concerned. But I guess apparently this sound might be like chalkboard to some people. <laughs> Feels backwards fine though. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to do the exact same thing to the rear that I did to the front. Including beating its dents out, going through the brakes, cleaning up the cables. These are the adjusters for the rear. You, the wheel can get sucked forward from the pull of the engine and the chain and, and braking. But so on the back you have these adjusters that are actually like locks too. It locks the axle from wanting to go slide forward. And it makes it really good for adjusting them. You can see that, that one is in a lovely shape. I bet you just 400 people correcting me on what they're called right now. <laughs> it's fine. All right, so I'm going to go tear into that one and see if we can uh, get this bike ready to roll. Probably be a good idea to remove the clip. Bet you can shoot this across the room. <laughs> nice later, still not too bad. Right tool for the right job, right? That should be too soon. I believe we have new ones. We'll throw the new ones in, but we'll keep those in the stash for the next bike. Oh, the rims are drying up. Get that rear taillight bracket and fender out of there. So we're looking at one, two, three, and then on the fender, there's two there, and another two up there. Can we get to the back of them and spray them? That one might be no. Yeah, well, alright. Get rid of the chain guard. Rear one looks like it is just a bolt through, so if we break it, I won't be that concerned. But. but it came apart. Do you find the this hardware seems to be fairly decent? I shouldn't have said that, now it's gonna break. <laughs> snap, snap. chances on them sometimes the hammer yeah, we're not gonna get into decent trips again. sometimes the hammer effect helps break it loose there we go. nice two more Part and I should be together 50 years. Go we'll find any fossils, <laughs> sand pit fossils. I don't see any, any rot holes, a nest of some sort, moss. 
I don't see any rot though. I'm gonna take, take a little bit of time and pick all this stuff out of here and clean this up too. Mm, looks fine. Just dirty. Looking at it after I got the back tire and assembly out of here. Looks like the upper frame head is just, to me it looks like it's racked a little. I'm not sure if that's it or if it's just because the muffler got pushed in on this side that it's making it look that way. Let's go bend this off so that the boot can kind of relax. Maybe. That's not going to fit. It helps to make noise. How's that? Yeah, that's better. The top of the shock is bent too. The whole thing's kind of out of whack. I'm looking right here. I don't know how worried I'm going to be about it though. As long as the, the back tire tracks the front sprocket, that's mostly what we're concerned with. I'll keep an eye on that. Why don't you just unbolt it, spin the. Why don't you unbolt that and just spin the head right around? They're both kind of kicked up about the same amount that I'm looking at it. I just think it's this. I think this has just sat this way for such a long period of time. Can I steal a shock? I don't know. I'm gonna think about that. I look a little better. All I did is I just popped it off. Spun it around. It was like that. I just put it up here and gave a couple of tugs on it. It seemed like it squared itself off. But while I got them off, I'm going to go clean them up. Opportunity, right? Cleaned all that up. But let's see if we can get rid of that curl right there. I have a feeling the, the keeper that was on there for the back wheel broke off. And somebody actually smashed that with a hammer just so they can get the nuts started again. That's a guess on mine. You think? Just good old vice grips and grab it and bend it? I wonder if I should put something flat. You know what? We'll do this. One. Wouldn't help if they were matching vice grips, but. Two. Now let's see if we can get it. There we go. One more now. One more. All right. This part is straight. Yeah, that's fine. Overthinking it. I'm gonna clean up some of the pieces that are waiting to get put back on. So do the same to that fender. That one I don't think is gonna come back as nice as the front one, but oh well. So looking down the bike, you can see that she's getting kind of racked. I think it starts a little further up, and then it, it, it probably took a hit at one time going this direction, and we're flip and kind of mushed everything that way. I say we try to go see if we could put a pry bar in here. See if we can influence it at all. Might have to put it on the ground though. Let's go see. That's just dent. <laughs> I just made it a big dent. Let's go. Let's go get something to run down here to support it. Got a brass bar under there for a little bit of something. The other side might just lift right up too. Any difference? Oh, my screwdriver fell off. There is a 
The bike doesn't sit level on the lift because of the kickstand. It sits on one side. I think it looks better. I still say the plate's got a bit of a twist to it though. Can we get in there? Do more than that, though. More. It's still down a little. I'm going to leave it till I have the tire on it, make sure everything's sitting center over the tire before I am uh, I'm doing what I'm doing now. Clean and pack the bearings. I think I am ready to reassemble. You think the chances are that that is just going to go flip right over there and slip right into place. The bearings are <laughs> just as I figured. The bearings are cleaned and packed. I think somebody was uh, a little late on the job there. The notches are cut lengthwise. I don't know. I thought it was like that. Maybe it's just because they're so squished down in there. Let's go with kind of what kind of slippery something do you want to put on them? Just so. How about. Do I have window clear? I might not have any. Actually, I think I don't. I have a hint of a squirt. Uh oh, I think that's it. <laughs> Let's see if that's, if that's enough. Getting that sucker down, we're gonna get that snap ring on though. That seems like it's gonna be fun. The pads that are in there, I'm not all that crazy about. Plus I don't wanna bend anything, you know? That still has to drop down pretty far to get the clip on. Hmm. This is either going to be highly intelligent or terribly stupid. I have not decided which one it is yet. There we go. Don't put too much pressure on. That should be enough to get the ring on. Let's see if we all fit in there. Pliers are going to open it up enough. They're on an angle now, so yeah, it's going to be the get in here with, with the other ones, but I'm not going to be able to do it with the camera in the way. One more time. Yeah, these don't open wide enough. You get the idea. As long as you can get it to click down in the groove, I think we'll be good. Let's get it free and hopefully <laughs> don't put it on the bike and it wobbles. <laughs> so that is supposed to look like that. So we are going to take that and weld it to that after we cut that off. I exactly call it pretty, but I would call it functional. I can take that off. I use the original nut and the two washers that were on it.
got to loosen it up some and come up to the travels. Too tight there. Left side shock mount going uphill too. Let's see if we can give it a little bit of an attitude adjustment. Anything? One more. One more. My, putt, my pipe's going mushy. I hate when my pipe goes mushy. Are there any better? <laughs> Now we're slightly downhill. <laughs> I think it's one of those things. I wish you to leave well enough and alone for close enough. I don't exactly say it's perfect. That's probably the more important direction. You're not hopping going up and down the road. I think Johnny's dad took the bike for a ride a couple of times to him. Took it off some sweet jumps. That's all buttoned up. The only thing I don't have on is the chain guard. I could probably throw that on. But the wheels are looking good. Everything looks nice and clean. Fender, tail light, assembly. So I think next on the list is wiring, brakes, and cabling. We still have the seat to reupholster too, but looks good. Now they cleaned it up a lot, huh? Look at my bench. It's got like a bomb went off. <laughs> it starts out. I clean up every time when I start. This is the aftermath. How's that back look? It's still got a little bit of a. I don't know, because the, the bike does lean. The shocks look good. It came back pretty good. alignment wise I think it could probably take a little bit more of a twist I'm gonna leave it alone I'm getting ready to call it a night but I think you know, to the point where we could probably cold start it and run it through the gears and watch you retire let's give her some choke and some fuel how many do you think and a key Shift lever. Do now. Let me put you guys in the stand. Yeah, it's a little wobbling in the back. I have to look for another one of them, huh? Alright guys, so I think that's enough for this one. Is that where we got? Getting closer. And with that, I'm going to all thank you for hanging out in the garage with me. Doing some ranching, playing with old rusty junk, and having some fun. Till the next one, guys. I will see you later. Bye.
kind of a burnout. 